Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinars. Uh, my name is Stephen Bissett. I am one of the moderators along with my colleague Nauman, and our presenter today will be Victoria Studley. Today we're going to be going over Welcome to the Third Dimensions Materials Matter. And about us, uh, Victoria and myself are both technical support specialists for Autodesk here in Manchester, New Hampshire. And Nauman is one of our AutoCAD expert, expert elites out of Cincinnati, and you may have seen him in and around our Autodesk forums. Before we get started, as always, we have our uh, house cleaning, things that we need to take care of. Um, everybody who is registered will, should be getting this email as a reminder that our webinars will be starting on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, feel free, during this presentation, during this webinar, leave questions in the questions chat window. We'll answer as time as we can. Um, as always, these sessions are recorded. They will be posted up to our, uh, our channel on YouTube. All of the links and all the information that we are using within this webinar will be available. There will be a registration reminder. We'll have a post-webinar survey, again, with our chat window. So again, welcome to the, uh, our webinar series. We really do enjoy having these and having all of you attend these for us. Um, some previous uh, IQ webinars were Modify the Commands, the Saga Continues, Welcome to the Third Dimension, Scratch at the Surface, Working with Layers, Continued, Tools for Navigation, and Reusing Content with Ease. Again, that was a revisited webinar. And on the bottom you can see our AutoCAD Exchange Builder AutoCAD IQ is our YouTube channel. Uh, before going any further than here, uh, what we'd like to also do is uh, let's take a couple of polls to get out of the way all of our house cleaning. Um, Victoria, would you mind running the first poll for me? Okay. So is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? And it looks like uh, we have a lot of return visitors. We'll keep this open for another few seconds here. It looks like uh, it looks like we can close this one out. Looks like only nine percent are brand new, which is fantastic. We love having new, and we love having return uh, return attendees to these uh, these webinars for us. can run the second one. So which AutoCAD application do you, AutoCAD based application are you using? Is it AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT? AutoCAD Architecture, AutoCAD MEP, AutoCAD Electrical Mechanical or, or Mechanical, or is it Civil 3D or MAP? And it looks like we have a majority that are in the core AutoCAD, which is again fantastic. We're going to be going over uh, materials today, which is included in our verticals um, as well as AutoCAD. It's like, uh, oh, excellent, excellent. I'm almost about 50% are using AutoCAD. That's fantastic. I believe we have, do we have one more poll, Victoria? Ah, have you joined the AutoCAD Customer Council? And that's something that I can go over in a second here. 94%, uh, that's fine. Um, it's something that we've put out there to help us develop our products better. All right, well, we can uh, go ahead and close that out. What I will do is... We actually got yes. one more. Oh, excellent. <laughs> There's one final one there. And then we'll save the last one for the end. Perfect, perfect. And our question here is, how often would you prefer to see these webinars presented? Weekly, twice per week, twice per month, monthly, or every other month? Um, that's excellent. Looks like everybody enjoys listening to us talk and show you how to use the program and show you maybe little tips and tricks that you may not have known or a refresher on something that you had already known. Um, so this is really great information and we do appreciate the honesty. That's excellent. 60% for weekly. It's fantastic. All right, so let me uh, 
show my screen here again. All right, so moving along, influence the future AutoCAD releases. We would love for you to join our AutoCAD customer council. These are for customers who want to partner with us or with their AutoCAD development team to help us decide where these products should be going. You know, your feedback is very important. You design these, the software for the users in mind and your input is extremely important. A great reason to participate. You have access to those early ideas and build access to things before others do. You can really help us influence our future releases and your feedback will be heard. Please, please get involved. And you can contact us through the autocad.beta or autocad.lt.council and they're both at autodesk.com. So with our Autodesk Knowledge Network, or as some people call it the AKN, some featured articles we have are the coordination model snaps, the service packs, how to get free education software, the hot fixes for 2016, LT, and core, as well as service packs. You know, in the essence of time, um, I haven't gotten a chance to go through the agenda, but uh, Victoria, would it be okay if I pass this on over to you so you can start and uh, so we can have as much time to get through all this as possible? So I would like to introduce my colleague, Victoria. We're going to transfer this over to her, and she'll be talking to you this week about materials. So, Victoria, I'm going to make you presenter. And you should be good to go. Okay. Can you see my screen? Not as of yet. But we might be still having a little bit of difficulty with the go to meeting here. I can see your screen now. Fantastic. Perfect. All right. Let's jump right in then. Again, sorry about the delay, um, but I'm glad that we got everything up and running again. Uh, my name is Victoria Studley. I'll be presenting materials in AutoCAD for you today. Um, so. Here's a, uh, a rendering done in AutoCAD of a table you might recognize from some of our previous 3D webinars. I'll be showing you how to create some of these materials and apply them uh, today to this model. Oh, here we go. All right, so the first thing that we should talk about is the Autodesk Materials Libraries. There are a couple of different libraries. The Base Image Library is the one that is installed by default with AutoCAD. Um, in order to uh, get some close detail rendering, though, um, or higher resolution, uh, you can install the medium resolution image library. You can do that by entering the render command or render crop command in AutoCAD. If it's not installed, you'll be prompted to install it. Um, typically, it is installed by default these days, but uh, you can double check by going into your control panel and then checking your programs and features and search for Material Library 2016 and it'll um, look something like this. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, so that, well, okay, let me go back for a second. Uh, the low resolution library is um, 512 by 512 uh, resolution images and the medium resolution library is made up of 1024 by 1024 if anybody was wondering what the difference is there. Um, okay, so uh, let me jump right into AutoCAD here. Here we go. Hey, Victoria, while you're jumping, yes. can you just answer a very quick question? Because people are, have, some people are on AutoCAD LT and they want to know if they can do anything uh, in AutoCAD LT, which you're presenting today. Uh, this is all in core AutoCAD. Uh, you cannot do 3D or rendering in AutoCAD LT, so you do need the full version of the program in order to use these tools. All right. Um, so here we are in AutoCAD. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, tell you where I am. I'm in the 3D Basics workspace in AutoCAD 2016. That's right here. And I'm on the Visualize tab up the top here. Uh, I've turned a couple of the panels off in, so that we can see the uh, the full materials panel here, uh, which gets a little condensed at times. 
So from here, um, the first thing that we're going to open is the materials browser. And I have mine docked here. And that should look something like this when you open it for the first time. Uh, the materials browser allows you to easily search uh, libraries full of materials. And here's my Autodesk library over here on the left. I have a favorites library as well where I've saved a few of my favorite um, materials to use. If I expand the Autodesk library, you can see the different categories that some of these materials fall into. You can also navigate this here by clicking on a little arrow and selecting, let's say, flooring and then further filter those results by carpet, stone, tile, vinyl, wood. Maybe we just want to see the wood floors. And that makes the list a little bit more manageable. Now, if you're having trouble seeing some of these icons, you can click on this button here and adjust this. You can either just look at the text, or um, what I like to do is click on the thumbnail view, and then we can take a look at all the thumbnails. It's a little easier to see uh, what those materials will look like on uh, either, uh, well, we're looking at all wood right now, so they're done on a, a basic box. But if we go to fabric, you'll see that they're, um, the thumbnail image is a draped fabric. So that gives you a good idea of what it'll look like on whatever type of object you're applying it to. So these different types of objects, when you create them, or sorry, these different types of materials, when you create them in AutoCAD, have some different properties. I'm just going to jump back into PowerPoint here for a second. Oh, that's not it. There we go. Um, what I've done here, I'm just going to show you a quick rundown of the different materials, the default paints, the stone, wood, plastic, concrete, ceramic, masonry, and you'll notice that they each have um, different uh, properties that are available. There's also a default uh, generic material, and that has all of these different properties available. Reflectivity, transparency, cutouts, self-illumination, bump, and tint. Um, some of these have relief patterns available. For instance, wood, you can add a relief pattern that looks like wood grain uh, to make it look a little bit more realistic. And these are some custom material settings that we'll come back to in a few minutes. So now I'll go back into AutoCAD. Okay. So I'm just going to jump into my favorites here uh, because I've got them saved. Oh, I didn't save the one I'm looking for. Okay. Um, that's all right. I'll, uh, I'll find it. So here we are, Autodesk Material Library. I know that I have a, it's a tile. So probably flooring and then tile. And here we go, this will work. Uh, let's use the red one. Okay, so you can add um, materials to your drawing by clicking on this button right here. and It'll add it to the document and then open the materials editor. This allows you to edit the material as it appears in your document. You can't edit the ones directly in the Autodesk library. They're always uh, read-only. But once you add it to the document, you can make any changes that you want. So if you'd like to change the color or uh, the fading, the glossiness, highlights, any of these um, properties of the materials, you can adjust. So I'm going to close the materials editor here. And now that it appears in my document, I'm just going to drag it onto a couple of these objects over here and uh, show you what we can do with them. So in order to add this to an object, I can just drag and drop it on there and it appears. And that's a little dark. It's hard to see. I'm going to pick a different one. And it's as easy as this. These are all pretty dark. There we go. That one's a little easier to see. I'll zoom in on this. And something, uh, something else to note here, I am in the realistic visual style. If you're in, say, um, conceptual, you won't actually see the materials. You do need to be in that realistic visual style in order to see, um, to see the materials applied in real time. Um, now this will look a little bit different. 
uh, if I add it to another object. Now I'm going to use um, a different method here. If I select this and open the Properties palette, once a material appears in my document, you'll see material um, uh, populate in the Properties palette. And you can either apply materials by layer, so anything on that layer will automatically assume a particular material. Or you can drop down here and pick any of the materials that appear in the document. So I picked that circular uh, just to show you something here. Um, one other thing that we can do is only apply it to a particular face. So for instance, this cylinder has two faces, one that, well, three, the bottom, the top, and then the, uh, the side there. So what you can do is press down control and then select just the surface, uh, just the face that you want. And uh, maybe I just want to select the top. I can just select that one. I do want to select that side though. So what I can do then is keep holding control down, drag and drop that material, and there it is. So another thing that you can do with these materials is map them onto an object. So the material mapping uh, comes in four different types. Uh, there are planar maps, box maps, spherical maps, and cylindrical maps. And I'll show you what a couple of those look like here. Um, if I am to change this one to planar, you'll notice that uh, only the top plane retains that image uh, in the particular direction that it's uh, oriented, and then the, uh, the rest of the image um, follows down the side there. So if you were to apply a logo um, to the top, uh, to a particular plane, that might uh, come in handy there. Um, this one here, we'll take a look at spherical. And this is what it'll look like in spherical. It kind of wraps that um, a little more smoothly around the sphere. Now what this does is it, um, all of the points at the north and south faces uh, are compressed into those uh, north and south poles of the image. And then this one here, um, we will apply a cylindrical wrap to that. And that one didn't change much, probably because I didn't apply it to the whole object. There we go. Now I will change this cylindrical to uh, box. Um, there we go. As a sphere, it condenses the, um, it compresses the top and bottom of the image to the top and bottom of that object. But if we apply it as a cylinder, it gives us the, um, the pattern on the top there that we want to see. So that is material mapping. Um, Let's see. Oh, there's one more thing. Uh, let's say we do want to apply an image. Now, I, I do have one saved in my favorites here that I want to use. Or I did. Sorry, I'm going to cheat here for a second and grab this from a different drawing. Oh, no, it's not here. There it is. I would not worry about missing files. At least you didn't lose all of your audio. Oh, that's, yeah, I think that's the most awkward moment we've had yet. <laughs> all right. So I have what I'm looking for here. Um, what I'm going to do is map an image that I have. Uh, I'll open this material to show you what it looks like first. Um, in this material, I've set the image to an actual image. Um, it's a lake in New York. And um, what I'm going to do is drag that onto here. And you can basically project that image onto a plane, which is what I've done in one of the rendered images here. I'll uh, show you right now. Um, I've set this in the window as if you're actually in that area looking out on it. Um, that's just a single plane with that 
um, image mapped to it. Oh. Okay, so that's the that's the basic concept of um, of how materials work. Let's uh, let's jump into this one over here, and we'll we'll start applying things. So I have this um, I have this model here that you might recognize. I'll zoom in on it a little bit so you can see it better. Here's the table, um, and then I've got some materials applied to it. And what I'm going to do is remove all the materials and then show you how I've created uh, the materials to uh, put in here, and then we're going to put them in. So up here, if you ever need to remove materials, you can remove them one item at a time, or you can remove them all at once. You just click on Remove Materials, and then I'm just going to select everything in the scene and say Remove Materials. So now we're left with just the basic, um, just the basic geometry here. So the first thing that I want to do is um, drag and drop. Okay, let's see. Well, let's go in and take a look at them first. These are. Uh, these are basic glass. These are right in the Autodesk material library. I've pulled them into the drawing already. Um, I can show you where to find them though. They are under here. They're under glass and then you have the blue and the green and uh, clear. You've got all sorts of different types of glass here that you can use. So you pull one on that you like. Let's take the blue here. I'm just going to add these to the A by dragging and dropping them. And we'll grab this one here, and then we'll grab a, uh, let's grab a green. There we go. Um, now for the, uh, the, the glass is pretty straightforward. If I didn't like, um, let's say I didn't like the reflectance, maybe I wanted to be more or less reflective, I could just use the um, slider under reflectivity, a direct or oblique. Um, you can use image fading on it. Uh, there is no image attached to this one though because it is glass, it is clear. You can change the color of the glass here by picking on the color and just pick whichever color you want that glass to be. Uh, you can adjust the glossiness, so if it's too glossy or not glossy enough. Um, uh, you can adjust the highlights. You get the idea. Uh, transparency is another important one for your class there. So you can change all the transparency properties to suit your needs. I'm just going to leave this one alone because I like it um, the way it is. What I would like to change though is um, I would like to create a floor material. Um, so I'm going to go back here and take a look at the wood materials in the Autodesk library and yep. and there's a uh, I think I used cherry you know it doesn't really matter I'm just going to copy it um, so I'm going to take this birch and just pull it into my document now this material resides in the document and if I double click it, it should show me all these properties. Uh, now I like some of the properties, but I'm not crazy about them all, and I definitely want to change the image. So what I can do here is right click on that birch and say duplicate. Uh, this works really well if you know that a material has a lot of the properties that you want, but you want to tweak it a little bit, and you don't want to um, overwrite the original image or the original material. So I'm going to double click into this. I'm going to change the name to, uh, let's call it wood floor. And then I'm going to click on this image here. And it shows me the image properties. And now what I can do is uh, change the source. And I know that I'm keeping this on my desktop in the materials matter uh, folder here. And you'll have, um, You'll have access to all these files uh, if you check the box account where we upload all of these materials afterwards. Um, so I know that I want to pick this uh, wood light gray. 
and open it, and you'll see the image change. I'm going to expand this a little bit for you. Come on. There we go. Okay. Um, so one of the things you can also do is pull this if you want to get a closer image, a closer look at that, uh, that image there. So there we go. Uh, I can change the brightness of this, but I think Oh, sorry. Um, this one, yeah, this one we're going to leave the brightness alone. Um, I would like to change the sample size of it, though. So I'm going to change the sample size to maybe, I don't know, let's say 50. And the sample size, think of sample size as scale. Um, so 50 units or 50 inches if you happen to be, happen to be working in inches or millimeters. Um, tiling will um, tile the the pattern either in the vertical or horizontal direction for you. If you check none, it won't. It will just repeat the image one time. Um, but we do want to tile this, so I'm going to change these back, and you'll see that uh, there's 50 units in this direction, 50 units in that direction, and then it shows you uh, in the image what it's going to look like um, as the pattern unfolds in either direction. So I'm happy with this for now, and I'm just going to close out of it. And now that I have it here, what I can do is zoom out on my model, and I'm just going to drag and drop this onto the floor. Now, in real time, uh, you can take a look at this and say, okay, well, maybe, maybe those floorboards are unrealistically small. I don't like that very much. Um, it's really easy to just double-click double in here, um, double-click this image again, and then we can change the sample size. And I'm going to change this from 50 to 100 and then watch the floor change before your eyes. Ta -da. So, um, a lot of this is trial and error, and I, and this is just me, I prefer to work this way um, on smaller models. On larger models, it can be hard to work in that realistic view, um, but it comes in really handy uh, with materials like this where there's a scale associated with them that you need to maintain. All right, so the next one, um, I have a couple of these already made. Uh, let's take a look at the dark gray wood, and I've called it zero, dark gray wood zero, because I have um, a second one, I'll show you why in a minute, um, that is called dark gray wood 90. Uh, now I'm going to use this one for the table, and I'm just going to start dragging it onto pieces of the table here. And you'll see that it shows up there, and I'm pretty satisfied with the scale there. I'm going to drag it onto that. Oh, oh. There we go. I'm just going to drag it onto the bottom rung there. I'm going to zoom out. And now I'm going to drag this onto the table legs. And if you notice on the table legs, um, I, I don't really like that it's on um, horizontal. So what I can do is I've copied this material identically uh, into this other one here, and I've gone in, and I've changed the rotation of it to 90 degrees. Now you can rotate this any way you want, um, if you want 45 degrees, if you want some weird um, angle, if you need that for a particular reason, you can uh, change the rotation dynamically. Um, I am going to leave that at 90 degrees, though. I'll show you what it does in a second. All right. So from here, I'm just going to, um, actually, I'm going to select all four of these because I know that I want to apply them all at once, and I have multiple objects, and I just want to, um, I don't want this to be too repetitive. So if you right-click on the material in the Materials Browser, you can assign to selection. So if you have 100 objects that you need to assign a, a material to, this makes it really quick. And you'll see that that changed. Um, so now I have that uh, material going up and down instead of side to side. So I'm going to do the same thing here um, to, my, uh, to my window. 
uh, trim there. Oh. Maybe that didn't work. I'll just drag them on there. Um, and then I'm going to get the rest of the trim with this one. I'll just say assign to selection and now they're all changed. Let me go back to my home view here. All right, so the last thing, well, two things we have to do. Um, let's, let's do the, uh, the brick wall first. So for the brick wall, let's get some perspective. I'm going to switch that back to parallel, make it a little easier to get around. Um, for the brick wall, uh, I do have it here, um, but we're going to recreate it on our own. So let's go back into the materials library, and I'm going to filter by, is it masonry? No, by uh, stone? Nope, that's not right. Okay, I'm having a little trouble finding it, so um, another quick trick here is to use a search. If I know exactly what it's called, but I can't figure out which, um, which category it's in, I believe it is masonry, um, I can just search for brick here, and it'll bring it right up. There we go, and that, um, that narrows that down for me. And then I can click on the categories over here, and it shows me anything with the word brick in the name. Um, so I'm just going to pick any one of these, a non-uniform soldier brick. Now let's take the uniform, uniform running gray is close to what I want. I'm just going to bring that into my drawing, and it opens it up in the material editor. So from here, I have my own um, brick, uh, high resolution brick image that I want to use. Um, it fits the, the room, maybe I have a spec to me, and I couldn't find exactly what I needed in the material library, but I have a good um, picture of what I need for my rendering. Uh, what I'm going to do is click on this image, and then click on source. Uh, I should show you too though. You can also click underneath source if you want to get directly to the image to change it without having to launch the, um, uh, the texture editor. Um, but I, I'm going to work in the texture editor. So I'll go back in here, and I want this uh, tan brick. And we'll say OK. And then the image will update. Let's see. Now one thing about this one, here we go. Um, so the scale isn't, well, the scale is uh, not identical. Uh, the width and the height aren't identical because it's brick. Um, so this one, the reason I picked one of these is because the sample size is already set um, to reflect a similar brick image. So I'm going to leave this one alone and uh, see how it does. So let's close out of this. Um, I am going to save this as a different name and say uh, custom brick. That way I know which one I'm using. I'm just going to drag this on here and see what happens. Okay. So the first thing that I notice here is that it's way too small. Um, I have a saved view. If you remember this from one of our previous webinars, um, I know that I want to render this particular view here, the render background in window. So I'm just going to click on that one, uh, and that gives me a good idea. Those are really tiny bricks. That's not what I want to see. So I'm going to go back into the Materials Editor, open this up, and I'm going to change the sample size. Now I know from um, trial and error, previously uh, I, I was playing around with this, and it, it does take a lot of trial and error. I probably spent about 20 minutes going back and forth saying, oh, no, that doesn't look right. Maybe this does. Um, but I wrote them down to save you the, um, the trouble here of watching me play around with all the different numbers. Um, so I'm going to uncheck this uh, link box, and this way that I can uh, adjust the width and the height um, independently. And I know that my sample size is 100 by 100. And then I'm going to link those back together so that I can change them both at once again. And now that looks a lot better. Let me close out of this. And you can see um, that looks a little better than it did before. 
um, especially with something like brick where you want it to line up at the edges here. If you zoom way in, you'll notice that they don't quite, the rows don't quite line up. Um, if you don't get a perfect, a perfectly orthogonal picture, um, sometimes it takes a little uh, finesse to, um, to line them up properly for whatever view you're using. Or, um, or you might need to go back and find a, an image that matches up a little more perfectly. Um, for this one, the closest I could get it was to come down here and adjust the rotation angle. And I adjusted this rotation to 359 degrees. And you'll see everything shift a little bit. Um, that worked pretty well for this view, but to be honest, I'm a perfectionist and I could sit here all day and try to get this um, this bottom row of bricks to line up with that molding. Um, it's just not going to happen uh, right now. But if, um, if you have the time to sit there and figure out exactly which angle you need, it, it can be worth it. All right, so last thing um, we're going to do here is um, I'm going to map that image onto um, onto this uh, plane here that I've put in place for this window. So let me go back into my favorites where I have that image. Oh, I need to clear my um, search filter. Here we go. All right, I'm back into my favorites here. And I have this uh, window canvas. And I'll show you what I've done with the window canvas uh, before I apply it. So I'm going to click into the image. Oh, no I'm not. I'm going to add it to my I'm going to add it to my document first so that I can edit it. Um, all right, now I'm going to click into the image. And I know that this um, I know that this window is 48 by 60. So what I've done is mapped the image um, in the material so that uh, it will appear the way that I want it to appear. And you can do this by adjusting the offset. And I set the offset to negative 18 units. Um, but if I set this to zero, you'll see it jump back up there. And again, I, I set those sizes by uh, unlinking the sample size and then setting the width at 48 and setting that height at 60. I also turned off the repeat so that it only appears once. Okay. And then I set this, well, uh, you know what, I will leave the position um, untouched for, for the moment and I'll show you what happens. Okay, so I'm going to map this as a planar face and then I'm going to drag, oh, I'm going to accept that. And then I'm going to drag this, oh, it's up here, um, onto there. And now for my render in background window uh, view, I see that I can't see the trees or anything. I'm seeing a little too much of the water on the bottom. And I really want to see the, the tree line um, at this particular angle. So I'm going to jump into the editor again, click on that image. And this is where you can use that offset to adjust the image to the height that you need. And I know that negative 18 is what I wanted. And you'll see the image shift down. And now it appears the way I want it to appear. So at this point, um, you can render the image. You can save your work along the way, um, absolutely. Uh, but you can render the image now based on any lights that you have. You can use the render environment. Um, let's see. I'm going to go back into, where's my PowerPoint? There it is. Nope. There it is. Okay. Um, what I've done here is I've um, taken some screenshots of the custom material settings that I used in this demo. And um, I'll provide those in the data set. So when you download them, if you want to try them out, if you want to adjust some of the settings, you have them all right here in front of you. Um, I know when I see a rendering that I really admire and I want to try to um, replicate it, 
uh, one of the first things I ask is, what were the settings you used? And, and sometimes if you don't capture it in the moment, you don't necessarily remember because rendering is um, such a trial and error art form. Um, so those, uh, if you're trying to do this and you get a little stuck, download that data set and, and play around with it. Uh, here are those render settings as well um, to get this, is it this one? Uh, yeah, to get this particular image, um, I turned the environment on, I used my image-based lighting, I set it to warm light um, because I've used the cooler tones um, for the materials, and uh, I adjusted the exposure and turned down the white balance, and then I used that uh, lunch quality, so it takes about an hour. Um, I also adjusted the DPI to 300 DPI and uh, used this 19... 20 by 1080 uh, render preset, render size. Um, yeah, so I think, yep, that's, um, so that is about all I have for now. Um, Steve, do you want to jump in and wrap up the presentation? And then if we have, um, if we have some time at the end, I'll be happy to answer some questions and uh, Absolutely. There's a there are a couple of good questions uh, right now, but let's uh, finish up this housekeeping so we can have as much time as possible. Um, so if you don't mind, if you could make me the presenter. There you go. Yeah, thank you very much. Let me uh, show my screen here. Excellent. Well, Victoria, thank you very much. Um, so, some additional resources we have here. Um, as always, this this presentation will be put up on our uh, YouTube channel, where all of the other 50 some odd, 45 plus some odd webinars are located. Um, so, additional resources obviously are Autodesk Knowledge Network, um, Medium Resolution Materials Image Library how to organize materials, create modify materials, legacy materials. Uh, there's an awful lot of information with regards to how to create materials, how to modify them, and how to apply them to your model. Um, some of our coming attractions. Um, obviously this week we have our uh, Materials Matter. Uh, our next webinar will be Express Tools, moving on to Building Blocks, Going on to, again, attributes, or as uh, my colleagues like to uh, joke around with me, I say attributes. That happens to be a terrible accent issue that I have. Um, as well as uh, the next one, the last one we have out uh, scheduled right now, it will be another 3D webinar, Messing with Meshes, showing you how to work with uh, 3D mesh objects. Um, I believe we do have one more poll, correct? Uh, we do. We want to know if you uh, learned anything today, so I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and launch that. Yes, excellent. There we go. All right. So, that is fantastic. Um, a very large amount of people learned something new today. That is our entire goal for all these webinars. Um, I know one of the questions, and uh, I believe my colleague Nomina answered it. Um, <laughs> I was just reading a chat. Um, Victoria, is my Nomina, is my voice coming through clear, or is it still a little choppy? It's clear. Thank you, Nomin. Um It's you know, it's one of those things. We get a lot of the internet connections. Um, it's excellent. So thank you so much. I'm really happy that everybody was able to learn something new and the information that Victoria had shared has been absolutely fantastic. Um, if this is your first time or if you know anybody that's interested, um, they can visit artist.com forward slash help dash webinars to register. And as always, we love your feedback. So you can go to um, the link on the bottom, Autodesk forward slash uh, AutoCAD webinars. And so for our webinar series, uh, close this, make sure I'm still sharing my screen. You know, we have our landing page. Please go there. There's a lot of great information you'll find there. Feel free to leave us questions. 
be able to, uh, the link is also in, in your webinar reminder, and we can try to respond back and uh, get you answers on those. As always, our feedback. Any ideas and suggestions? Um, is there, if there's a, if there's a piece of content or a subject matter you would love for us to go over, let us know. We're more than happy to help out wherever we can. And always, anytime you send something in, make sure on the subject line you put build your AutoCAD IQ. That way we know exactly where to filter these questions to. All right, so we'll do some more Q&A. Um, what I'll do, Victoria, is I will actually just set you as presenter. Um, actually, let's take, you know, let's do this. Let's take a quick quick look. I think some of these questions can be answered without having to go through that. Um, one of the questions that I had seen uh, was uh, looks like uh, where was it? I had lost it. Um, there was something that went back earlier where um, you had been adjusting that material right there for the brick. Um, did you rotate the image or scale the image to get it to position properly? I did both. Did both, uh, so, okay. Yep, yeah. so I will go into the material here and I can show you again. Um, what I did is I opened, uh, I opened the materials editor here and then I clicked on the image and that opens the texture editor. And in the texture editor, uh, if you scroll down, there's the rotation here, um, and then there's the scale size, uh, the scale, the uh, sample size. So the first thing that I did was I adjusted the sample size because the brick showed up way too small. This was like tiny itty bitty bricks, and I kind of eyeballed it um, to look about the right size for a brick. Uh, if you are working in particular units, millimeters or inches. Um, I try to keep this kind of generic because I don't know what everybody's working in. Um, but if you are working in inches or millimeters, uh, you can set it based on the units. Um, so if you know that your brick is, you know, four inches by six inches, you could um, uh, scale it accordingly in there. Um, the second thing that I did was I, um, I changed the rotation because I noticed I'll have to pull this off to the side to show you. Um, well, watch the bottom there. I'll change this to zero degrees, which is where it started. And you'll see it shift a little bit. Um, let's say I change this to like five degrees. It'll make it a little more obvious. So the brick is really tilted on the wall there, right? Um, so in, in order to, sorry, in order to adjust that, um, what I did was I, I went in and said, okay, well, 360 degrees is the same as zero degrees. So I went 359, just to switch it, you know, just to shift it a little bit. I mean, I could have gone in the other direction, one degree, um, but that actually made it a little worse. Uh, so you can sit here and, I mean, you can, you can get this down to two decimal places. Um, so 395.5 degrees if you think it's not quite lined up properly. Um, Excellent. Yeah, does, that, does that answer the question there? I believe so. I believe so. Uh, that answered my question, so that was really good. Um, I, <laughs> I don't want to get too a... far in the weeds on it. Uh, some of these oh. settings, you can spend all day sitting here adjusting settings back and forth. And I, I have a tendency to just, um, what do you call it, Steve? Um, build a watch. <laughs> Building a watch, you know that, that yeah. that's a, you know that's a really great term with regards to materials and rendering, because it's the detail um, that you're putting into it, and uh, there's an awful lot of settings and there's an awful lot of, you know, you get an image and actually there was a comment in the in the questions panel, but you know the image was already skewed when you received it, and that's a big thing too because if it's not perfectly square, then your bricks, especially if you have something with horizontal or vertical lines, and yeah. it's just a matter of getting it to look right, and there's where you're quote unquote building the watch. Um, another question, because we have about five minutes left, um, mm -hmm. is, the question was, is there a difference between assigning a material and mapping a material to an object? Um, so if you assign a material, it's just going to uh, put that material on there. Um, 
in a default manner. Um, but let's say uh, maybe we can use this chair leg as a as a good example. Um, if I select this and I adjust the material map on there, um, if I make it planar, let's say, um, I need to say yes. Um, you notice the difference now between the two. Um, this one is mapped as if it's on a box, so something that has six sides. Um, this one now um, has mapped it as if it were looking I, I'm having trouble describing exactly how it works. Um, the, uh, I think, I think so what happens is it's the shape of the object. Um, uh, a, a cube will have a different, well, essentially a different shape, so it depends on how that material is wrapped around. Um, one thing that I saw, and this kind of triggered my, my mind, is you can actually see the grain in the wood. And if you look at the object on the left, it's a little patchy but the one on the right looks really nice. The grain of the wood has this nice sloping curve around the actual curve of the, of the, of the leg. So it's all depending on how and what kind of objects you right. use. Right, and I think if, um, so the planar map, if you imagine it, is like draping that plane over the object from one direction um, versus uh, if you use the box map, which is the one on the left here, it says as if you're projecting that um, material onto each one of the sides in a straight fashion instead of just draping it all in one direction. Does that make, does that make yes. sense? Yes, yeah. I, I, I think so. I think so. Um, let's see, another one. Let's see what else we have here. I don't have any other questions that I'm, that I'm finding in here. Norman, do you see anything? I'm sorry, go ahead. Steve, I did see one in there um, about material libraries. There's a question about uh, whether or not you could save a material library of your own. And I, you guys might have answered that, but I meant to address it in the beginning. Um, so Absolutely. I can cover that really quickly. Okay, um, we have about two you, minutes left. If you come down here in the left-hand corner, um, and click this little uh, folder with the wrench on it, there is uh, the option to create a new library. And you can save your own ADSK lib file and save that in a, um, in a safe place that's not going to get blown away, and you can import that um, into any instance of AutoCAD. Um, so what, what you would do, well, let me, here I'll create a new one. Um, test library, I'm just going to leave it right there. Okay, and then I can just drag, oh, come on. I can just drag any materials that I want into here, and it'll save that library uh, in the location that I set for it. Um, and then if you're going to uh, import it, what you can do is open an existing library and then just uh, navigate to that location and find that adsk.lib or sorry, that .adsk lib file, and uh, that'll import that library for you. Any other questions, Steve? We've got about a minute left. Uh, yep, there's a few seconds left. Um, you know, there was one question about creating a favorite material in AutoCAD and reusing the same material in Revit. Um, that is a fantastic question. I don't know if... I believe, I believe the Autodesk... Um, materials library works across platforms, I, I, across multiple um, programs. So I know that it does work with 3ds Max. Fairly certain it works with Revit. Um, there is a link in uh, the resources section of the PowerPoint um, that I provided that I believe lists all the programs that the Autodesk library applies to. And um, so one thing that I can say, say, oh, I'm sorry. I, I guess I would say I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do that. And one thing that I can say is that the, um, the materials and, and, and editing and the materials editing process within um, Revit is not too dissimilar than it is in AutoCAD. Um, so you certainly can take, if it's not included or if there's any difference, you certainly can take your image or your material, save out that mapping, and then 
bring it on over into Revit itself. Um, so we are now at the top of the hour, and I do want to thank all of you for sticking through. I do want to apologize for our uh, little audio and video uh, mishap we had earlier. Um, I hope you Thanks all enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give a special thanks out to uh, Victoria, who put together some fantastic information, and our good colleague, Nauman, who uh, was spot on when answering a lot of our questions. Uh, we hope to see you next time. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day.